Good morning. It's just barely still morning where I sit on the west coast of Northern California. 11.42 a.m. And today is Wednesday, March 9th, 2022. I am old enough to still remember 1999 like it was yesterday. <laughs> Mm, that was a big change and we're in the midst of a lot of change as well. Sometimes when I say 2022, it still catches me a little off guard. So welcome. Welcome to those of you who are joining live. Um, also, if you're watching the replay, welcome to you. Whether it's still morning where you are or shifted into afternoon, evening, even nighttime. Had a moment this morning, so I want to talk about, of course, what did I say? My most important practice. I was going to say something sort of cheeky, like, you know, my number one tip for higher efficiency. And then I was like, I don't even really want to, I don't even really want to use that hook. Um, but sometimes it's hard to know exactly how to capture what it is that I want to talk about, you know, in a pithy one-liner that will have people want to watch a Facebook Live or a YouTube Live. So anyway, welcome, welcome. And uh, I had this morning where most of my morning, you know, there are many things that needed my attention, even after all the things of getting myself ready and getting my kids ready and getting them to school and feeding the cat. And, you know, even after all that was done, I had this morning in, in terms of my home and my work and my business and my clients and where there were just many different things that were sort of all, you know, they're all connected, obviously, partly by me, partly by my business and, but sort of disparate, you know, check on this, email this person, um, you know, handle this thing with one program, handle this thing with a different program, update this, you know, they're, they're a little like this. And already there's just something about this morning that was sort of feeling, um, you know, like a, I don't know, like it could be like a bee or like a dragonfly or like a, something that, that sort of flits and lands and, you know, but is, is in a lot of motion, which is just interesting because that's the, that's the animal, energetic animal archetype that I'm sitting inside of for this lunar cycle, this dragonfly. And just as a side note, the, the deck that I'm using around it talks about it having to do with the quality of the mind. And so I've really just been watching my breath and my mind. And one of the main things I've been watching actually is my desire to always have input. So I've been going for walks without podcasts and just like, oh, there's some desire to keep my mind active. And what is it to allow the, my, the settling to allow my mind to settle? Anyway, that is not my most important practice, although it is an important one. But in this space of over here, over there, you know, I would do one thing and it was it was kind of like that's how my tasks already were in reality. But also there was like a quality in me that was a little like, oh, you know, turn on the tea kettle. Uh, get distracted and respond to an Instagram DM, get distracted and end up in my office responding to an email. Remember that the tea kettle boiled, go pour my tea, you know, get distracted by the word game I like to play. Get, and so I, I was sort of like this too. And I was remembering how one of my, my one-on-one -on -one clients actually recently left me a message and one of her questions, and it actually, it stumped me for like a good five minutes. I was like, does not compute basically basically her question was like how do you uh, manage to stay on top of everything every day like how what are your organizational systems such that you get everything done every day and uh and finally I, I realized like what was happening when it didn't compute and finally the message I left her back I was like well number one I don't I do not accomplish everything every day Every single, like, and not even just every day, right? But every morning, something 
is not done, right? Something that should have gotten done or could have gotten done or would be better if it got done, did not get done. Uh, and every afternoon, and by the time that it's time, oh, it's Candace. Sorry, Cand <laughs> it's so sweet to see you live. Every time that it's time for the kids to come home or for me to pick them up or for me to stop for some reason, there are things that did not get done. And most of the time, like, like it's actually just the wi the willingness to let that go and and recognize this got done and this did not get done. This still needs to get done. And and I thought, well, that's that's the thing. And then I realized, so it was happening this morning, and I noticed that I could have, I could have been saying like, oh, you should have done this, or why haven't you done this yet? Or you're about to get on a call with, you know, this this group of uh, like a peer mistress mind that I'm part of. And and you haven't done what you wanted to do before that call, you know, and and I just noticed like the potential for self-judgment, blame, and shame. And I thought, oh, what I do, like how I manage my life basically is not picking up the stick to hit myself with self-judgment, blame, and shame. And what that allows, it, I mean, first of all, the, the amount of time, attention, and energy that we spend saying, I should have done this. Why didn't I do that? I could have done this. Like what a stupid, how stupid me for spending my morning getting distracted by tea and Instagram. <laughs> you know, you could have edited your Fierce Guys webpage. Um, I, the amount of time, energy and attention that, that would be spent if I were to pick up the stick of self-blame, shame and judgment is actually greater than everything I could have gotten done this morning. And, and I thought, well, just, just tell people that, just tell them like, like, just, just don't do the shame thing. And, and I thought, well, people are going to say like, but I can't, like, I can't not do that. It's, you know, and I really think that is actually my most important practice and it has been lifelong. Uh, it might not totally be true. I don't know that I became I mean, certainly there's like, when did I become actually self-conscious, not self-conscious, but, you know, self-conscious of this as a capacity, not until early adulthood, maybe, and then really taking on. And it is a, it is a, a kind of a practice that is actually deeply self-deconstructing in the sense that most of us do not know who we would be without self-judgment, blame, and shame. We think we don't like, and to some extent it's true, you know, we don't like how self-judgment feels. We don't like, like we're like, oh, the shame, and the shame doesn't feel good, and yet it's comfortable, it's familiar, um, and it feels both comfortable and familiar, not only with our own selves, but relationally. I actually think one of the, the major things here is like, it is a radical and revolutionary thing to truly just like not feel ashamed of what I didn't accomplish today. <laughs> and not in a like whitewashing bypassy, like I'm just doing the best I can. And usually, that's actually reifying self-judgment, blame, and shame, and then trying to placate it. But it's because we think that it's real. And so we need to argue with the blame, shame, and judgment as a real thing. And so we tell it, no, you know, I did the best I could. And there's other people not doing as much as me. And I do plenty. And I'm a good person. Rather than like literally not picking up the stick of self-blame, shame, and judgment. Or if I like start to reach for the, right? I start to reach for the stick. It, it literally happened while I was reaching to open the refrigerator door to get milk to put in my tea. And it, I could feel myself like reaching for the stick of self-blame, shame, and judgment. It was like, oh, no, 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 don't pick it up. You know, or if I happen to pick it up, it's like actually just set it right back down. I don't need to throw it. I don't need to break it. You know, I don't need to argue with it. Like just literally drop it. Just, oh, just drop it. As soon as I notice it, just drop it. And it made me think, it reminded me of this argument that I got into with one of my Zen teachers. I think I was 19 years old. And um, 
His name is Reb Anderson. He's still alive. He lives uh, in Marin in California at Green Gulch. And we were at Tassajara at the time, which is the Zen monastery where I was raised. But I went back as an adult. I left college and I went to the monastery. And it was my one of my very first um, intensive periods of practice where it's winter time and it's dark and it's cold. And it was probably the winter to spring because that's when Reb likes to teach at Tassajara. So that's actually, it's getting lighter and, and brighter. And there's many stories I could tell about the, the blossoming that comes. Um, but we used to have lecture. We would have lots and lots and lots of meditation in the cold, dark Zendo. And, um, but we also had study where we would read and we did work practice and we also had lecture. And sometimes we would have lecture in the meditation hall, but sometimes it would be in the dining room, which was warmer. And so we were having lecture in the dining room. I can imagine all of us sitting there and Reb is sitting at the front and I'm somewhere and something happened. We got in a fight. I, I'm not going to remember all the pieces and exactly how they weave together, but he, he was basically teaching on ignorance. And so he called people ignorant and my self-righteous like warrior rose up and I was like, you can't call people ignorant. They're not ignorant. <laughs> I was basically saying something like they're not ignorant. They just don't know better. And which is basically the definition of ignorance. <laughs> but I was 19, so you have to forgive me. You don't have to, but you could. I forgive myself. I'm, I'm embarrassed sometimes when I think about it because I actually stormed out. I, was, I got so upset that I started crying. And so I left, I stormed out and I went and cried. But what he was talking about in terms of ignorance was actually the way that we will just not on top of not on top of not. So he was saying in some way that most of us, I mean, this is sort of an, I'm not going to try to go into the essential teachings of Buddhism and the teaching of ignorance, but he's sort of like, we have like a, like an original knot. It's a little bit like original sin, but maybe not as bad. <laughs> we have an original knot of ignorance of just not seeing the world the way it is. But what we do on top of that often is, is, is the judgment on top of that, like, oh, I should be different. And then we'll see this. So this is, this is like a favorite thing for humans to do is we know, for instance, so, you know, we don't do everything we could do in a day. There's like, just a, like, ah, and then we have a, and then we have a, like a, like a judgment of ourselves about it, right? That's a knot on top of a knot. And then we know we're not supposed to judge ourselves so we judge ourselves for judging ourselves. And that's the knot on top of the knot on top of the knot. And then we know we're not supposed to judge our, we're judging ourselves still. And so then we feel ashamed, right? So we put shame on top of judgment, on top of judgment, on top of just not having done the things that we wanted to or said we were going to do today. And the main thing, the most important thing is that wherever we notice the knot is we just stop. And maybe, you know, I'm 44 years old. I was about to say 43 because I barely, barely 44. Um, but maybe we have a lifetime of knots, you know, and maybe some of our practice actually does untangle knots and we start to get down in our, you know, our the beautiful unknotted skein of hand spun, you know, yarn <laughs> wool that we are. Uh, starts to become, it's still maybe wrinkled from having been knotted, but has fewer knots in it. But still, still there's like a point where something will, you know, like, like some, like I should have done that. And it, and rather than like, oh, I shouldn't have should it on myself. Oh, I feel ashamed that I have a judgment that I should have, that I should instead of wherever we notice that we're starting to not is just to stop. Is just to stop. And even if there are a hundred knots that are still undone, rather than, than glomming onto those knots, which just creates more, is just to stop. And I wanna say it's simple, but it's not easy connected to the, what I said at the beginning, which is most of us do not know who we would be. We don't know ourselves without blame, shame, and judgment. 
no matter where we are in the world today, for the most part, I want to say 99% of the world, nine, you know, it is that there's some overarching sense that punishment works, that it is the judgment and the punishment and the shame is what will make us do better. And we're afraid that if we do not judge ourselves, or if we don't judge other people, if we do not punish ourselves or punish other people, that we or they won't do better. And it's not true. But it is, it can actually be terrifying. It can actually, it can, it's almost like free fall. It's like this, um, like true balance, maybe in headstand or a moment, right? Where you have this balance and become weightless is actually both exhilarating and terrifying of wait, but if I don't, if I don't judge myself, if I don't pick up the stick and flagellate myself for what I didn't do, if I don't argue with what I should and shouldn't do, if I don't try to prove that I'm good in the face of the fear that I'm bad, who will I, will I even exist? It's really the, like that, that, that weightlessness and that, you know, it is, is, it's, it's exhilaration also, but it's, it's sort of a, it's almost a weightlessness, right? And it's that sense of like, do I even still exist if I drop the stick of self-judgment, blame, shame, you know? Um, but it is a worthy, it's a worthy practice. And I will say that I do believe that it is actually what frees up the majority of my life force that is then available to actually just do things, like make a live video, whether I've done what I was supposed to do or not done it, that the, the energy itself, the life force itself then doesn't get caught in the knots. And I love this thing that, that Rob said here. He said, one of my favorite prayers, God, please untie the knots. And I, I guess I would just, you know, the, for me, the purpose of this, of what I wanted to say today is even if all the knots that are already there stay tied, we don't have to add any new knots. We don't have to, there doesn't have to be knots about the fact that we have knots or that we haven't been able to untie them or that God hasn't untied them or that our practice hasn't untied them or, you know, God only knows what but we do not actually have to add any new knots that are about what we should have done or the judgment about it or the shame of this or what we have done in the past or what we haven't done in the past or who we should have done, who we should have been or who we could be or the better person we would be if, or the, like, we can just not, we can just not, not. <laughs> and uh, so that's my very long winded answer to like, how do I get everything done in a day? I don't, but I don't not about it. And what that allows me to do is mostly do what needs to get done. And I sleep well at night because I don't think about what I haven't gotten done. I know that it's going to be there in the morning. It always is just like waiting, <laughs> but there's, I don't need to think about it. So, and again, in that very tangible sense, the thing I want to say, you know, when this client asked me, I realized like, oh, we're all out there thinking somehow someone has a better system for organization efficiency, getting everything done so that actually everything is done in a day. And I actually don't think there's anybody like that. I would go out on a limb and say nobody. Uh, if there is, they are definitely the outlier. But the majority of humans on earth do not get everything done in a day. And really the only difference is, are we gonna spend most of our time, attention, energy, and life force feeling bad about that? And, and somehow judging ourselves against imaginary people that don't exist? Or are we just not gonna not, not the not? <laughs> so. That's my, my wish and my blessing for you is do what you do. Don't do what you don't do. And there's just no need to add knots on top of it. It literally is or is not. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Um, there's always too much to do. There just is. And there's simply no need to add judgment on top of what we haven't done. All right. Sending you much love. Ciao.